Hey, what's going on everyone? Mecha here and welcome back to the Fire Emblem Three Houses Blue Lions Maddening Mode Low Turn Count Playthrough. We are in Chapter 2 today. We are back to kicking Kostas, but this time he's all the way at the back and uh, we have to kill a bunch of units once again to get to him. And uh, these units, they are what makes Maddening Mode so, so annoying. I feel like the first few chapters of Maddening Mode, pretty much everyone enjoyed themselves. They were like, alright, this is a little harder, but I like the challenge. They get to this chapter and they're like, Actually, this is not fun at all. This is just this is just lame, man. Because uh, this is when you meet thieves and archers with their new manning mode skills. Thieves have passed, so they tend to just kind of run past your first formation and uh, kill units in the back line, which makes it pretty hard to protect him. And the archers are really annoying as well. They have three range to work with as well as poison strike, which makes him do an extra 20% HP worth of damage after every combat they initiate. It's very, very annoying. And uh, also the enemies are very accurate and very dodgy because of their high prowess skills. Um, I don't remember exactly what level they are at, but it's pretty damn high. And that makes things pretty annoying with accuracy especially. They also have higher charms, so hitting gambits is harder on manning. Uh, we do have three battalions to work with now, and they are on Baleth and Dimitri, obviously, because of their high charm. And we hit the last one on Ingrid, uh, not because she's particularly good or anything, uh, but because her personal skill boosts their damage by a little bit. Uh, we would put it on Felix if you make use of him, but again, he prefers to make use of Lone Wolf for an extra plus 5 attack in the early game. At some point, he will probably get a battalion, but as it is right now, plus 5 damage is way too valuable to let go. So, in this chapter, we try to make the most out of linked attacks and gamut boosts whenever we can, but the accuracy is still very shaky. And in order to deal with the enemy's increased bulk, we have to pretty much rely on things like combat arts plus a steel weapon to hit. And while these are generally fairly accurate, we have to hit so many of them, and the same goes for our gambits. Um, in order to reach the boss by a certain turn, Dimitri has to move his full movement pretty much every time. Uh, that means moving four movement, which isn't a lot. Uh, it's the same everyone else has, which is really annoying when you're trying to low turn count something. Uh, but that means that Dimitri is pretty limited in where he can go. He just kind of has to go along a certain path and everyone else is kind of working to clear it for him. And that often means trying to freeze enemies rather than dealing with them in one round of combat. Now, Felix here is... I, wouldn't, I don't know if you would call him the MVP of this map, but he is really, really freaking good. Uh, mostly because of the flexibility of Curved Shot. He's carrying three different bows for different kinds of damage and accuracy thresholds. Uh, but he's able to shoot them from anywhere, pretty much. And that makes it a lot easier to place him in such places where he could be most useful, if that makes any sense. And it's the big reason why you have to go to the D-bows. Um, we had to cook defense plus one in the monastery to make sure that we had enough uh, durability, especially Dimitri to survive all these enemy phases. Uh, that All that stuff makes this chapter really tough to plan. Uh, you also notice there's like a lot of trading going around, a lot of equipping weapons without even doing anything with them, mostly like iron bows. Uh, the reason for that is just to send up linked attacks and uh, gamut boosts. They're not as effective right now as they would be later on, because our units have barely had any time to build up supports, and uh, without supports, these boosts don't really do much, but we do try to make use of them when we can, because any bonus to accuracy is super welcome in this in this place. So you'll see people like Dudu and Byleth and pretty much everyone else just randomly equip iron bows during player phase when they're standing near an enemy just to boost someone's accuracy. Now, um, as we said before, we needed Dimitri to have uh, the Gerald mercenaries for this part. Or actually, we needed Byleth to have the Gerald mercenaries for this part, just to be able to freeze a couple of enemies that are, I think, coming up in about two turns. So make sure to look your eyes out for that. And for that reason, we had to get the Gerald Mercenaries to level 3. We had to train them last chapter on Dimitri, uh, but we're giving them to Balath this chapter. Uh, one more thing that makes the uh, Gambit more accurate on everyone is the Brew Lion's Brooch. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word right, but you know what I mean, right? It's the item that uh, you get on Balath's birthday. For this reason, you want to set Balath's birthday to like an early game date, one that's actually during the monastery time, so you can get it. Um, it's basically just a held item that you get that you get plus two charm with no real drawbacks. I think the only real held item you get other than this is the letter shield. I think you get two of those, and those can be useful as well for getting a little bit of extra defense on a certain character. At certain times, that can be helpful. Now, the point we are currently at is probably past the point where most people have a big problem with this map because we dealt with the initial onslaught of enemies, and now our group is going to split up a little bit over the course of the next couple turns. Dimitri and Byleth are mostly going to be focused on clearing the way for Dimitri towards the boss. And everyone else is going to make sure to deal with this first th group of three enemies, two um, axe guys and a... Uh, well, three axe guys, but one of them has a battalion. That makes them kind of tough to deal with sometimes. And uh, they're going to make their way to the chests where there's a large bullion inside that we want to get for some more gold. Uh, again, 
Gold isn't exactly a sparse resource in all of three houses, but early on having more is welcome. Uh, the battalion shop is going to op open up soon, so we want to buy some battalions. I want to buy more weapons, because we bought us some more steel weapons, and you know, at some point we're going to need new ones. Um, a couple units we haven't really talked about very much yet, because we've been so busy with the combat at hand. Uh, Mercedes is a healer. Not a very good one overall. She has a lower faith rank than most of the other healers have base, so it takes longer for her to get Physic. And this chapter, all she has is heal. And she doesn't even heal that much. You don't heal much in, a, in general early on in three houses, so units also have to sometimes supplement their own health with, like, vulnerabilities and stuff, just to make sure they stay healthy. And uh, Mercedes has Lift of Serve, uh, which heals her when she's damaged, uh, if she's healing someone else. Not very useful, because Mercedes gets one-rounded by most enemies at this point, so it's kind of just there for show. Uh, Ash is here as well. He does have Kurt Shot. Uh, he's not as good with his Felix because his strength is much lower, so he's most useful for chip damage. And this chapter is going to get the chest and save us a little bit of gold uh, by opening that. And that's really pretty much Ash's utility. It's his linked attacks and that kind of stuff. And everyone else we've kind of talked about um, offhand or not. Um, something else I should mention uh, as I'm looking over my notes real quick. Uh, Aggro Incarnate and Chest Jump Bowl did a lot of helping with this strat. Again, this run was really a big collaboration between a ton of people. Something else that really needs to be mentioned about this uh, clear right here is that XP distribution is very important. There are three units that we really want to get to level 5 in this chapter so that they can qualify for their beginner classes, uh, take their beginner exams, I should say. Uh, those units are Byleth, Dimitri, and Felix. You know, <laughs> didn't really expect anyone else, did you? Um, they want to make it to level 5, and Byleth makes it right here. Uh, Dimitri and Felix are going to make it soon as well. Uh, this XP distribution is very, very tight and is what took up a lot of the planning, apparently, besides, you know, making sure that no one gets in the way of Dimitri, everyone survives, and they're trying to minimize, um, you know, reliance on low accuracy attacks. Um, but it's important that they make it now because otherwise they'd spend an entire another chapter uh, on uh, in their noble or commoner classes, and that's not what you want. Uh, we also want to get HP plus 5 when we can, but uh, I don't believe that is utterly important, but it probably happens automatically for most of these units. Everyone else does also work on self-improvement, but their promotions can be delayed a little further, and most of the time we're kind of forced to. Someone like Mercedes, who can only really get XP through healing because her offense sucks, or Annette, who is mostly spending time rallying, uh, they can't really expect it to be level reaching level 5 anytime soon. It should probably be noted that we could finish this map a turn sooner than we did. We're going to finish in 8th, but it's possible in 7th, theoretically. The problem for this is that it requires Dimitri to enemy phase crit Kostas, uh, the turn he gets in his range. And, um, you know, this is theoretically possible if you cook a certain fish that boosts his crit rate a little bit, like boosts his skill to a point. Uh, we'd have to let go of our defense cooking, which helped us survive on the early turns mostly. And uh, that's going to cut into reliability quite a bit. And in addition, we would be unable to get the chest with all the gold in it, and uh, as I said, gold, it's, it's not tight in three houses casual playthroughs, but in LTC context it really can be. So, we really, you really don't want to go that for reliability reasons, like, the, the crit is like, basically What's single digit do? percent already, so it isn't a reliable clear by any means. Uh, but yeah, surprisingly, it looks a lot easier than it is this chapter, but I can tell by the way that everyone is trading around, like, the Blue Lion's Brooch and certain weapons, equipment Iron Bows, that this took a lot of planning to do. So I really gotta give a lot of props for everyone who's involved in making this. It's really insane. I particularly like the use of Ingrid because Ingrid is not exactly a unit you'd love to use on their, uh, Blue Lines Maddening. She's pretty bad when she starts at level 1. And her only real selling point is her personal skill and uh, Tempest Lands. And other than that, she's pretty fragile and dies pretty easily. But she was really forward in this map and pretty crucial to freezing a couple of key enemies uh, using both of her Gambit uses like that. Um, I guess one big drawback of playing this chapter like this is that Sylvanus get a whole lot of XP, but like I said, you gotta sacrifice some XP, and at the very least, Byleth, Felix, and Dimitri basically make it exactly to their HP thresholds. One thing that does really help the reliability of this chapter is the fact that Divine Pulse became available for this one. Uh, I believe we only needed one Divine Pulse for this entire map, which is quite a miracle. Uh, Divine Pulse cannot be used to reset level ups, everyone gets the same level ups within the same chapter, so the RG for that cannot be re-rolled. Uh, but for things like unreliable hit rates or uh, gambits, stuff like that, you can Divine Pulse to reset them and uh, just take a different order to try and change who hits what. And that can be really nice. Um, but yeah, the, just the video of this chapter being cleared efficiently does not su sufficiently show off exactly how hard it was to plan. Uh, I can imagine this must have been a really, really big pain. Uh, but yeah, Ash gets the large boolean on the last turn, or I should say an extra large boolean. And uh, after a couple more XP chips, we're going to kill Kostas using Felix, getting him to level 5. And uh, that gets the trio that we needed to to level 5. And that's pretty much all we need to do for this chapter. 
So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I haven't uploaded the first video at this point in time yet. I'm just recording this ahead of time so I don't fall behind. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm not used to doing these, doing these commentaries solo. Especially not on my own runs. But I gotta say this is really interesting to analyze and go through. So um, let me know if you do too. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace around and goodbye. I can... We have to...